All right, here we go. Object, unit nine, objective three, solving and evaluating with common bases and common logs, okay? When the bases are the same, that's the idea we wanna understand here. Okay, when we're talking about common bases or logs, we're talking about the bases and the logarithms have, are the same, okay? So same base, let me write, same bases, okay? So a prerequisite to be able to do well with solving logarithms and evaluating them is to have a really good uh, isolating a variable skills, okay? So this should not be new. I'm gonna do two examples. I would like for you to do the third one. If I wanna isolate, because I'm solving for X variable. So this is skill is gonna transfer over when I'm solving for a logarithm, okay? It just always transfer over. So in this case, I'm gonna add four. That's one step. Now I have two X equals 16. Then obviously we're gonna divide by two. So we get X equals eight. Remember, I say this very often in class, when I wanna solve for a variable, when I wanna isolate a function, whatever it is, we always use PEMDAS, but we use it backwards, okay? We are undoing, we are undoing operations. So we start from either adding or subtracting, then we either multiply or divide, then we go ahead and do expon exponents or parentheses, right? So those are the last things we wanna do because we are undoing to solve for a variable. Again, now let me do this example number two. I have variables on both sides of my equation. I have two X on the left and I have an X on the right. Well, why don't we move things that are common to one side and the other things that are common to the other side? So why don't we subtract an X from here? Well, we can only subtract X from X terms. So two X minus one X is just an X plus a six minus a three. Well, why don't we put the common values together, whole numbers or real numbers together? So minus six, minus six on both sides, left and right, we get x equals negative nine. So I isolate my variable on both of these examples. I would like for you to try this. You have gonna, you're gonna have a variable on the left, you have a variable on the right. It's not always moving from left to right or from right to left. You get to choose what is more um, reasonable, what makes it easier for you. So I would like for you to try this example, okay? All right, let's go ahead and review the properties of logarithms, okay? So here is what the idea is. It's a property of logarithm. If I have a logarithm and the base is exactly the same on the left of the equation as it is on the right, if my bases are exactly the same and I'm telling you that the left equals the right and the bases are the, the bases are the same, then that tells me that the value of X, whatever the value of this variable is, it is exactly the same as the value of Y. If you tell me that the left equals the right and the bases are exactly the same, then you're telling me that the numbers X and Y are the same. That's what you're telling me, okay? That's a truth in mathematics. I can make this even simpler in different functions. If I say the square root of a certain number is the square root of nine, I'm saying they are the same thing when I say that they're equal, then the, this number right here must be a nine. The square root of nine equals the square root of nine. That's the only way for this to be a true statement. Okay, so if the, if the, if I'm saying it is equal, then the values have to be the same. If I'm saying that the bases are the same and they're equal each other, then these two values have to be the same. In terms of exponential, in an exponential form, the property still holds true. If I'm telling you that I have a base to a certain exponent and it equals the same exact base to another exponent, then those exponents have to be exactly the same. If I'm telling you that three to a certain power equals three squared, I'm telling you that they are the same thing on the left as it is on the right, then that value of X has to be two to be a true statement, okay? If I wanna make a false statement, 
uh, then yes, it will be different. But if I want to make a true statement, then the x value has to be two, okay? That's what the property is. And it will make more sense as we keep working on it, okay? So let's see if you really understand it. If log base three of x equals log base three of seven, then the value of x is a seven, okay? Let's see if you understand in exponents properties. If I'm saying four to a certain power equals four to the ninth, then that power right here on the left has to be a nine. Okay, let's make sure we understand it. Let's take it a little level up. If I'm saying log base five of two X equals log base five of 18, then two X has to equal 18. If I'm saying that the left equals the right and the bases are exactly the same, then those two values have to equal each other. Can I solve for X from here? Absolutely, we can solve for X. We'll divide it by two on both sides and we get the X equals nine. See, it's very interesting, right? Does it make sense? Plugging in a nine in here on the left, two times nine is 18. Yes, it makes them be a true statement. Okay, let's check one more time. Nine to the power of X plus three. Okay, a certain number plus three equals nine to the seventh power. Well, if the bases are exactly the same, check, check. And that tells me that X plus three has to equal a seven. What would the X be? X plus three equals seven. Well, if I solve it here simply, X equals four. Okay, four plus three, seven. Yes, it equals seven. It will be a true statement. That's the idea, okay? Now, it's not always gonna come that simple, right? We're gonna have to use rules of exponents that we learned before. Remember, logarithms is all about exponents. Please remember these rules of exponents. When I have an X to the A to the B power, then I have two powers going on, powers of powers. And that tells me, then that tells me that X, uh, that equals, sorry, that equals X to the A times B. We multiply the powers, okay? So just keep that in mind. We'll be using this rule very often, okay? So solve the following equations for X using the properties above. So are the bases the same? Your first answer is no, the bases are not the same. Can we make them the same? Can we make them be the same? The answer is yes. I can make them be the same by using this property right here, property of exponent. So let me erase this. So there's room for me to work with, okay? So are the bases the same? No. Can I make them the same? Sure. Let's go ahead and work on it. I'm gonna leave the two alone and the X to the power of X plus six alone. But the four, we can certainly turn into a two squared, that's still a true statement, still a four, to the X power. So two to the X plus six power equals two. I multiply these two values to the two X. Now that my bases are the same, check. Now that my bases are the same, then by the property, it tells me that the X plus six has to equal two X. So I can set that aside, X plus six equals two X and I can solve for X, okay? Because that's what we wanna do. We wanna solve the equation for X. So why don't we subtract the X to the right? We get six equals two minus one is just X. So six, there we go. All right, let me go ahead and do number two because number two is kind of tricky, okay? All right, can we make an eight and a four and a two all have the same base? Right now, they don't look the same base at all, but we can. Always try to think about small bases such as two, three, five, okay? Try to think of those bases. 
So when I look at an eight, I know I can write it as a two cubed. When I see a four, I know I can write it as a two squared. And the square root of two, we can write it as two to the one half power. So everybody's written in terms of the base two, okay? Let's use the property of exponents that we, the rules of exponents that we know. When I have power of power, we multiply it. So we get two to the three X. When I have a multiplication with the same base, we add the exponents. So I get two to the five halves. You should not be confused how I got two plus one half. I made common denominators and I add the fractions together once I had common denominators. So now that the bases are the same, I had a lot of work to do. Now that my bases are the same, I can set the exponents equal to each other. So I know that three X will equal five half. Okay. All I have to do to isolate the X value is multiply by the reciprocal. What is the reciprocal of three? One third. But if I multiply on the left, I better multiply the same exact value on the right. Okay. So over here we'll reduce, we'll have an X. And over here is just a simple multiplication of fractions. Five times one is five, two times three is six. So our X value is five sixths. Okay. A lot of um, rules that we used here. Okay. We use rules of exponents, the rule of fractions, how to add fractions, how to multiply fractions. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a few easier ones. Um, how about, oops, I didn't mean that. Here we go. How about number three? Log base two of three X equals log base two. Check, 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 check right away. The logs are the same. So that's good. Log base two of three X equals log base two of 27. Since our bases are the same, then by the property rule, it tells me that three X has to equal 27. Divide by three on both sides, we get the X equals nine. It makes sense. Three times nine is 27, and I would have 27 on both sides. That is a true statement, okay? I would like for you, so this video is not so long, I would like for you to try this, use your rules of the property of logarithms, the bases are the same, and use the idea of how to multiply by reciprocal to solve for the X value, okay? We wanna make the video not so long, so I need you to do some of this work, and then we will definitely follow up in class, all right? Let's go ahead and do a few other ones. We're gonna take turns here, I'll do some, you will do some, okay? So this video is not super long. Let me go ahead and do um, number five. I have log base four of two X plus five. Over here, I have log base four of X plus 10. Since the log bases are exactly the same, then we can say that the value of two X plus five is gonna have to equal X plus 10. You can solve this equation. I'm 100% confident that you can solve this equation for X. So I'd like for you, to finish it, okay? X equals what, okay? All right, one more time. Log base three of X minus seven equals log base three of three X plus five. Since the logs have the exact same bases, then that tells me that X minus seven has to equal three X plus five. I'm 100% confident that you can finish this problem. I will double check in class so we can go over the answers for this, that you're doing it correctly. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and do something a little bit more challenging. That's way more, um, well, I just said it. It's a little bit more challenging for you, okay? So <clears throat> how about number seven? Number seven tells me log base eight of three to the two X. So this three is to an extra power of two X. Log base eight of three to the ninth. Well, since the bases are the same, check, check. That tells me that three to the two X equals three 
to the nine. Now I have the same exact basis again. It's kind of like, you know, I had the basis for the logarithm being the same. Now I have the basis for the exponents, for the exponential property to be the same as well. Check, check. Well, then that means that I can set the 2x equal to the 9. And that tells me that x equals 9 halves. Okay. So we not only got the properties of the exponent, but we also got the properties of exponents, exponentials. So we got both properties in one problem together, okay? All right, I would like for you to try number eight on your own, okay? The logs are the same. If you ask me, Mrs. Myers, I don't see a base. Where's the base? Well, then go back to objective 9.2 and ask yourself, when there's not a base, what would the base be? Log base, when is empty, what would the base be? Okay, I would like for you to try it. I would love to bring it up in class. All these questions I'm putting over here, question mark for you to solve, okay? All right, let's do a LN, right? LN is the natural log. So natural log is log base E. It behaves exactly the same as any other logarithm. So if this is log base E, and this is also log base E, then, the, then that tells me that two to the X minus one equals eight, because these are exactly the same. So that tells me that two to the X minus one equals eight. Right now, the bases are not the same, but that's not a surprise. We know how to solve that because we just did it a minute ago right here. Remember when we had uh, a two and a four right here in example one, two and a four wasn't the same. We made them the same. So it's the same thing here, okay? Then two and the eight is not the same, but we can certainly make them the same. Two to the X minus one equals two cubed. Now that the bases are the same, we can certainly go ahead and set our x minus one equals to the three. And we'll get the x equals four, okay? All right, so I would like for you to try number 10 so this video is not super long, okay? You see that there's log base three and this is also log base three. So that tells me since the logs are the same, I can go ahead and set my two, to the power of 3x minus 2 equals 16. Make it happen. Make same base, just like we did here with the 8. We can turn the 16 with the base of 2. Okay? So I'd like for you to finish x equals something. Okay? All right. Let's evaluate each logarithm here just as a quick little review so we can we can keep moving on and adding a little bit more to it. So what happens when we evaluate a logarithm? We wanna find out what exponent, right? Three to what power will give me, three to what power will equal the square root of nine. Ask yourself that for one second before we just go through the process. The square root of nine equals three. So what's the power here? Think about it, okay? The power is one, right? So that X has to be a one for this to be a true statement. If you didn't see this because you were just so blinded by the process, you probably did three to the X equals nine to the one half power, maybe. That's why you think about it. Well, we gotta still make same base, three to the X equals three squared to the one half power. When you multiply two times one half, you get one, three to the X equals three to the first. So even if you don't see it, okay? If you don't see simple things like that, then perhaps you can keep using those same exact property and your answer will show up. Since the bases are the same, then that tells me that the exponents must equal each other, X equals one, okay? All right, let's do one more just to wrap it up log base six of 36 times root six. 
Remember what we're trying to solve for it, right? Logarithm is all about exponents. Six to what power will equal 36 square root of six. So six to what power will equal 36 times square root of six, okay? If you need to pause for a minute and then think about it, how did she do it when we had a number and a square root together? I did that problem right here on number two. Remember when I had a four square root of two? Do you understand what I did here? Well, that has the same exact idea, okay? It's a very good uh, arithmetic skills or algebra skills that you need here. So six to the X power. How can I turn this into a exponent? Six squared. How can I turn this into an exponent? Six to the one half. I would like for you to finish it. Why not, right? It's good for you to think, how can I finish this, okay? So that's it for this video. It's a lot of rules of exponents and a lot of rules of logarithms that you can go ahead and solve it. Now I have all this printed and I know which questions I asked you for you to solve it. I will be testing you on it, okay? So that's it for the video. Good luck for today.